Hi guys, today we're going to do a really fun and a really easy project. We are going to take a beautiful Victorian style bale that I sell at bisuboutiques.com. Actually, there's three styles. And we're going to manipulate and cut them in half and do a little work with the hole punch and make them into really fast and easy earrings for you. And in the meantime, you'll get a little bit of better instruction on how to use the hole punch, the handheld hole punch, and not break it. Because some do have a problem with that, and I'll show you how not to break your hole punch. So come on over here and let's get right to it. Okay, guys, so these are, get that out of there. These are the bales that I'm talking about. Can you see them? I don't know how you think it's safe to zoom up on them a little bit. There, she's going to zoom up on them a little bit for us. Okay, so this one is Phil 04593, F I L 04593 at bisuboutiques.com. This one in the front is Fig, F I G 01174. And this one in the middle is FIL 04592 at bisuboutiques.com. We have the good stuff. And they're all raw brass. And that's a good thing that they're raw brass. Although sometimes we do have them in plated finish, but when they're in raw brass, you can do your own thing to them. And let me just show you what I've done. So I'll lay them aside. These, are those in the frame there, Hubby? Mm -hmm. Okay. These have torch patina. Now, I've not sealed that yet, but I might want to distress it a little bit with some steel wool. I might want to add a little bit of gilder's paste or alcohol ink to accent it. Um, but this is just from the torch, running a torch across it. So you can do that. And when you do that, it also does the back at the same time. Did you know that? When you use a torch to patina, you don't have to flip it over and do the back side. The heat automatically goes right through and you get both sides at once. Isn't that neat? Another reason to go get yourself a little torch. Okay, I'll put them aside. Now these, I only had time this morning to do one side. These are paint. These are spray paint, actually. Krylon um, Sea Glass is the name of the color. If you want to go to Walmart or one of those places and get yourself some Krylon Sea Glass spray paint, this is the color you get. It's kind of a brownish, ruddy, rust color. And then what I did is I used my 0000 aught, <laughs> whatever, 4 aught, that's it, steel wool. It's the very, very fine stuff and just distressed over the top and brought back the golden highlights from the brass. Um, these. are just your standard white, but I did it very, very lightly over the brass so it still has a little bit of a pinky glow to it. Just little spritzes. And then I distressed with the steel wool. And look at what happened. Very, very nice. So I could do that. But how am I gonna make this into an area? I mean, wouldn't this really be, and I didn't get the back side of this done, but I'm gonna bend it. Wouldn't this really be what you'd wanna use to say, uh, Maybe put a hole here and do a rivet and use this, you know, as a pendant or open it up and maybe glue a stone, a flat stone. Let's see, what do I have around here? Oh, let's, say, let's say I was going to glue this piece of power shell, you know, I could use that for a veil. Go through here and have a pendant. I mean, that's what people usually use it for, but this is not what we're going to do. We are going to cut them apart. And I'll show you an example of how I did that with this one. So I'll just take these and get them out of the way. Okay, look how pretty is this. I decided that the motif should point down, just as it does here. Although, with you, if you did it with a bail, it would be this way, if you bent it. Um, but I liked it pointing down, and then I punched a hole here, and a hole here, and a hole here, and a hole here. So I had a little bit of cutting a little bit of filing, and then a hole punch. And then whatever color I want. And I can apply the color first if I want. I can do the torch first if I want. 
or I could do it afterwards. It doesn't matter when you're using the raw brass. So let's do one. Let's see. Let's take let's take this one in the torch patina. And let's do what I did with these. We'll set them there for point of reference too. Can you see that, Javi? Okay, good. Very good. So the first thing we're going to do is you could, if you wanted, uh, get your metal shears, but I find that I'm doing just as good with my Krylon snips that we sell at BeastsBoutiques.com. And the first thing I do is I just cut it in the middle. Easy. Easy, easy peasy. But I've got, do you see, a little tab there to get rid of. So I want to kind of go around that little flower there and snip that off very carefully. The closer I can get it, maybe, maybe, the less filing I'll have. Although I'm going to have some on that. Because, yeah, you, you want to get that smooth after you've cut it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it. Whoops. Okay, so now I've got to file this a little bit. Now, let's see. When you file, you need to kind of file away from yourself. This is what they say. So I've got a hand file, and I'm doing it. Honestly, you know, that's technically, that's what they say, file away from yourself. You never want to saw back and forth like this. That, no, 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 no. But you know what? If you get good results doing this, then God love you. And that's all I got to say about that. But technically, if you're a metalsmith and you take a class on metalsmithing, in fact, you might even do big broad strokes like this. But this is an itty bitty piece, so I can't do that. But the main thing that you got to do when you file, if you do it technically the right way or you do it technically the wrong way, so long as you get it smooth, that's all that matters. So whatever you've got to do to get that smooth, in this case, now, maybe in some other cases, not so much. See, now I stuck my finger right in front of there. I end up filing my finger. So don't do that. I'm not a metalsmith. I just do what I do. So, the point is, you got to file this. However you do it, you got to file this because it's going to have a rough edge. And you don't want... You know, it's not good jewelry making if you have something that has little wires sticking out, glue gobs, holes that are off center, um, places that need to be filed and haven't been, especially. You know, one of the things that they say that if you're going to apply for a jewelry guild, one of the things they check most of all is your filing. And if your filing is not good and smooth and even, then you're not going to get in. So probably, I would not get in today. <laughs> but I'm going fast today because we only have so much time to spend. And sometimes I'll take a little of my steel wool. Here, let me get this in, in the shot. Is it in the shot there, Javi? Mm -hmm. Even go like this. Sometimes the steel wool is just the most wonderful little finishing thing to get a smoother edge. Now I've still got some filing to do, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead with this and show you the project. It's much easier for me to do my filing when you're not watching me, because then I can do what I want and get get her done. And uh, you know, if you want to see uh, a YouTube on how to file real good, why well, I'm sure you can find one. I probably should go look one up myself. I remember when, we, when I took the class with Thomas Mann a long time ago, he had this great big wonderful brooch file and he went big sweeping, sweeping motions. But he was working on a big piece and this is itty bitty. So anyway, I'm going to show you now how to put a hole in this using your hole punch, which is this apparatus, Minor Beadsmith. We carry them at the site. In fact, we just restocked them. We have goobers of them. You'll find them in the pliers and the hole punches section. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I broke mine. I broke it. I broke it. It's no good. Uh-uh. You've got to use it right. First of all, you do not use a hole punch like this for thick, 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 heavy brass, copper, whatever. You don't do it. This is not for that. This is for like 24 gauge sheet or higher, which would mean even thinner. Most brass stampings 
are made from 24 gauge. These are. Okay? So this is perfect for it. But there are some things you can do to help yourself out. Now, on this piece, I want my hole to be right in the middle of this flower and right here in the little curve. That's where I want my holes to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make a pilot mark for myself to make it easier to punch. And I've got my steel bench block, which we carry at the site. Even though we're not metal workers, we do have the basics. And this is a center punch. I believe there's some in stock. If not, let me know, and, or I'll have a look later, and I'll get some. And I'm going to stick it right in that little depression there made from the stamping. And I'm going to take my little ball-peen hammer, which I love. I'm going to give it a couple of whacks. Okay, when I did that, I'm part way through. I made that depression a little bit deeper that was already there. You can just see a little bit that it's pushed out a little bit. Then, I don't want to work from the back here because it's kind of pushed up. So I'm going to work here where I get a little depression right in the curve there. And I'm going to make myself another hole. All right. Now, I'm not making a hole. I'm sorry. I'm making a depression. Okay, now I don't need this right now, so I'm going to move that out of the way. I've got my depressions. Now I want to just guide my hole punch down into that depression. Am I on camera good? Okay. And using firm pressure, snapped right through it. And then just very carefully, just kind of twist that off of there. Okay? Don't jerk it. Just very carefully pull it off, okay? Okay, now I'm going to go from the back where I made my hole in this one. I'm going to turn my pliers around and go for that little pivot pilot hole and snap it again. Okay? Firm pressure, straight down. Don't jerk this off. I just kind of twist it off. Don't pull too hard. You don't want to ruin your pins, although you can get replacement pins for these. Okay, so now I've got two very nice holes. And what I can do is I can do even a little bit more filing on that. I've got my great big old file here. But see now when I'm doing that, see what I'm doing? I'm removing some more patina that I want on there. So you got to think about these things. Yeah, keep your fingers out of there when you're filing. Guys, I, you don't want to do that. I'm going to do this again because I kind of closed a little bit. Just kind of Broach it out a little bit. Okay. So I've got two nice holes. I'm going to make this earring for you, okay? How's that sound? Let's do it. Okay, so now I've got a pretty little drop here that I want to put on there. Now, I don't know. Do I want to do more to this? There's so many variations with this, and what I'm going to do is, once we're done with the video and Javi's processing, I'm going to keep on making earrings, and then I'll put these pictures on the Bisu Boutique's creative group. Come join us, why don't you? We'd love for you to come, and probably my blog, and we can also put the um, web address for the blog on the description, so you can go look at it later. So anyway, I'm thinking, well, I could just put that, or I have these cute little O-rings. I can make a longer, let's just do that, just for the fun of it, okay? Just for P and G, my son says. I'm not sure if that's a nice thing or not. <laughs> but Jordan, you gotta watch. Okay, so these jumps are a little bigger than I might have used, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use them. Whoops, he ran away. Okay, so now I'm just going to go through here and through here. And if I wanted to, I could even take another little bead. I love to layer. You'll see in my other earrings videos, I like to take little itty bitty parts and layer them on jumps. It's kind of a thing with me. I gotta see if I got another one because I have to make a match. Okay, so now I'm going to close this using my jumpy tool. And I get that really nice and flush. I want it so flush that I can hardly see a seam. Okay, and now I've got this connected. But, you know, this would almost make an earring just by itself if you wanted something simple, wouldn't it? 
Okay, now I'm going to connect the other side. back here. That's what I hate. You know, I didn't even drink too much coffee today. I didn't. On purpose, because I've been really shaky lately, and I'm like, well, Brenda, you drink too much coffee, you silly goose. Are you going to show these folks what you're doing when your hands are shaking like that? And it's awful hard to make nice jewelry with your hands just shaking like that. Yesterday I was working with Wire because I got a new book. Oh, I want to give a book a shout out. Um, it's a new Wire art book by Gail Bird. They have it at Amazon. Look up Gail Bird's Wire Wrapping Book. Um, fabulous book. She has a beautiful, beautiful line to her work. It's all freeform, which I love. Just love freeform. So I was trying to do some of that yesterday. Okay, so now I'm going to, I got this much. Let me show you what I did. Cute, huh? I'm going to have to keep these. <laughs> do you ever do that? Make something say, oh, I'm keeping those. I always get confused with these. If I got them on the right way or not. I might have had this backwards. No. Oh. I'll see that way. These are kind of strange. But they were just... open this up. There we go. There we go. I hadn't used them in a while. Sorry, guys. I can't remember the number on this. Uh, some of our earwares were a little low right now, but we will have more very soon. Okay, I'm going to take and fold that back up. So just so you can see, that's really cool. This is the earwire. It's kind of um, odd. Has, it's made from a ball end head pin. You could do this yourself. We have ball end head pins at the, sh at the site. Make your own. Wrap it over a sharpie. Make your own. Okay, in fact, at the site we have a nice tutorial on making your own earwares. So there, I made an earring. Very nice, huh? So now all I did got to do is take the other side, wherever that is, and repeat. Okay, now. For the sake of time, we're not going to finish this pair. I'm just going to show you how I would cut these other ones, okay? So that you can see. So on this one, which was is Phil 04592, and it's got torch patina on it, I would cut it right here. And then I would snip it off right here around the little rosette. This is going to need some filing, of course. The hole will go through there and through here. So you would go through the back on this one, right here and right here on your steel bench block to make your whole impressions. You don't have to do that, but I think one of the reasons why a lot of them are breaking these hole punches is because they don't. You know, when you're going to drill a hole, it's always a good idea to get your steel bench block out and your center punch and make a little pilot depression in it first. So that's what I would do right here and right here. And then file so it's nice and smooth and not jaggy on people. Okay, so that's how that's going to be. And then I would have things hanging from there and I would have my ear wire coming from here. And on this one... Okay, again, I'm going to cut it in the middle. Now, if you were to make a bale, you would fold it in the middle. You'd probably use your bale making pliers, your small ones, or pliers, and you'd fold it like this and get it even. But I don't need to do that because I'm not going to make a bale out of it. In fact, I don't really like how these look at as bales. Maybe you do. That's great. I like them for earrings. So what I'm going to do is cut this guy in the middle. I love this stamping. This stamping would be so great. Distressed. Okay, now on this one, I'm going to have to go down in here. So I'll just cut like this. Whoops. 
That was probably not the best way to cut that. I'll have some filing and cutting, but anyway, you can see. And then I'll show you where I would put my holes. And you know, here's the thing, you don't have to put uh, a hole in the bottom either if you don't. But where I would put the holes on this one would be, I would come around the back, because I have a little bit of an indent there, and I would put my pilot here and here. But I would think I would do that on the other side for this one. You know what I'm just going to show you, even though it's not filed. I'm just going to show you. I'll take one. You always go for where there's a depression already. So there's one here. And it's, it's not so close to the top that when you punch it, it's going to, you know, punch through and not work for you. So I'm going to give it a whack here. Okay. And then on this side, I'm going to flip it over. Huh. Looks like somebody already punched that one out there. What's this going on? Oh, maybe it's a little flaw in that one. I don't know, but I can make that work. It's just got a little nodule there. So we'll just punch it back the other way. Okay, so here and here. And then when I go to punch it, I'm going to go with where I, you know, what side I punched. I stamped it, hammered it. And then once again, gently off, turn this over to where I put my impression, depression, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and then gently off. Don't pull it hard. Gently, gently, gently. This one's sticking a little bit. Okay, we're good. And there I've got my holes for that. So I'll just have to go back and do my filing. So anyway, let me get this out of the way. So I hope that gives you some really great ideas of what you can do and where you can go with these. Uh, you could make little charms and pendants and things out of them that way too. I mean, and the color, I mean, the color, there's just a world of color out there for you. And of course, now you're going to want to seal them. These torch patina ones were sealed already. You can use Swellagant Clear Coat. You can use Kryolan Spray Lacquer. If you want a little bit of a glow, use Satin, but I usually use Matte. I use Krylon because it's just um, a little cut above the rest, but other spray lacquers will work if you don't have Krylon um, or can't get it. Um, but look at all the possibilities from one bale, a whole pair of earrings, and a few minutes work, you'll have a whole bunch of earrings to give as gifts or to sell in your Etsy stores or your websites, and it's just going to be great, and you won't have much money, and I think they cost like... A dollar seventy-five a piece for one of these bells, something like that, in that area. Run your torch over it; you don't even have uh, any paint on it. You know, you're sealing, and then everybody's got some little pearls and stuff hanging around that can dangle. Nothing to it. A couple ear wires, and there you go. Okay, so have some fun with that, guys, and I'll be back around to see you real soon. And come and see us at bsuboutiques.com because you know why. That's where we have the good stuff. Have a great day.